All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, at 6.03 p.m., I'm going to open this meeting of the Mount Greylock Regional School District Transition Committee for Tuesday, March 27th of 2018. Thank you, Joe. And I'd like to call to order the meeting for the Mount Greylock Regional School District School Building Committee for the evening of March 27th, 2018. So our, our shared agenda item here is a schedule update, um, a presentation of an updated um, proposed phased schedule for the building project. And I believe we're going to have Mike Giso from Turner, Turner step yep. up to launch us into this. Good evening, everyone. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mike Giso, project manager for Turner Construction. So we're going to... Um, perfect. Except it's upside down. <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> It's being built the right way, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is the view from the mountain out there. <laughs> uh, Mike, do you want me to scan it? No, it's nope. just, just got a. Uh, yeah. One more click and we'll be good. Yep. Yeah. All right. There we go. Now we're in business. All right. So. <clears throat> What everyone's looking at is a, a very uh, summary level uh, as far um, on schedule as it relates to certain areas of the building. So the uh, for those that can't see there, there are dates that are um, that are tied to each of the colored sections of the building. Those are all extracted from a very detailed construction schedule that um, I think some of you have been copied on through through emails yeah, and whatnot and we have models. copies if anyone needs it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so for those that, that that um so the dates that are identified on the um, uh, on the screen uh, they represent what we're projecting as construction activities construction activities complete for those areas um, so I list it on uh, the bottom left so what that doesn't include is uh, is punch list uh, there's some air monitoring that might be required for the um, for lead, uh, the testing, some testing and balancing, uh, delivery and installation of owner FF and E, which is the fixture, furniture, and equipment. Uh, the uh, the inspections by the authority having jurisdiction, and ultimately the um, what we're um, the the most important is the issuance of a uh, temporary certificate of occupancy or a. Um, uh, it might be called something else, uh, but essentially that is the certificate that allows uh, students and administration to occupy the building. So just to, to, to walk you through how the, how the project's currently flowing, the, uh, the area up in the, if you start on the right hand side over uh, in orange, uh, the white section is the gymnasium and to the right of that is the locker room wing which has already been turned over back to the district and is currently in use. The, uh, the area in orange uh, adjacent to it on the, the lower portion is um, some uh, is the uh, health nurse life skills area to the left is the uh, what's going to be the, uh, the fitness uh, fitness center gym gym area workout room and right now that's uh that's projected to finish up on uh april 24th so just about a month from now we're looking to wrap up that area uh, mike just uh if you can move the cursor of your mouse over the area that you're talking about that might help the Kay. people sitting back yep so yep. this is what we consider area b right here all right that makes sense and by all means if anyone has any questions along the way feel free to Feel free to interject. The uh, so then the rest of the the, the project, where essentially the way the project flows is from the three-story classroom addition, and we're kind of going in this direction a little bit with a little um, with a minor exception. And I'll get into that. Um, so as, as we work from, from north to south, so this area in green, this is the three-story classroom addition. It's just that. 
Uh, so all three, all three floors right now we're projecting to finish up uh, just after 4th of July holiday. So <coughs> the flow initially went in this direction. Uh, this area C is kind of the, the core public, uh, this is your main entry into the, into the new school. This is your public gathering space. You have uh, administration, uh, your library, some uh, large planning classrooms, uh, your tech classrooms up here, and then uh, like your orchestra area here. So originally the, the flow kind of went in this direction. Uh, because of just the, the public nature and some of the aesthetic elements related to this, it, uh, it's a little more complex than the rest of the building. So we actually ended up reversing the sequence and we're kind of working back in this direction. Anyway, all that being said, uh, this is likely the, uh, the last area that's going to finish with the exception of the auditorium. I'll get to that in a minute as well. Uh, right now, this what we're con uh, calling Area C is projected to finish up around um, just uh, around the uh, early August, first week in August. Uh, you move into the Area D. This whole area right here is considered Area D. Um, and the areas are separated by, by fire separation. So that's why they're actually, they are kind of legitimately separate buildings within itself. Uh, so this, uh, this portion right here in yellow is what will be the cafeteria mainly. And then back here is um, uh, the band and chorus area. And right now this area is projected to finish up around uh, towards the end of July. And then you move over into the kitchen in purple, which is uh, further along. Uh, we actually have equipment starting to uh, populate that area. And we're anticipating a, uh, a late June um, completion of this area. And then you move into the auditorium. Uh, the, so the auditor auditorium right now uh, uh, is, is projected to finish around the first week of September. Uh, so this is one area that um, we uh, that may not be ready uh, for the for the start of the school. Uh, the auditorium is tends to be just a little more complicated just because of everything that goes into building an auditorium. Um, however, that all that being said, you know, we're, we're doing our best to not only for the auditorium, but for all these dates, trying to improve on them as much as we can to bring them back earlier just to uh, realize the benefit of that schedule. Uh, just some minor areas too, in case anyone's in, in case anyone's wondering, uh, this this white area here, this is the uh, the existing boiler plant. And uh, there are some areas that get fit out in the back here, some storage areas. Uh, this is all going to be ongoing through throughout construction through the fall. There's a lot of areas back here that we really can't build out until the existing school comes down because a lot of the main utilities run through here. So that's why this is uh, more ancillary space, nothing critical for programming come come the start of school. And then there's this little little red area back here. This is. Um, some dressing rooms and maybe some practice areas. Mary, correct me if I'm, yeah, no, if I'm in. And a storage area. And uh, <clears throat> there's just uh, some sequencing challenges here where we actually have to add some additional structure, uh, what, which we cannot do until the existing school buildings come down. So that's one area, too, that we're not anticipating having ready for, uh, for the start of school. So this is all. This has been a uh, this is a, a process that we've been working on now since probably early February, uh, in developing this and uh, giving everyone confidence that we're we're on track to get everything done and in place for uh, the kids to return back uh, to school in the fall. Uh, with um, uh, we've had a number of, of of good discussions with with the OPM, with the district, with several members of the. Uh, the school building committee uh, my uh, my general man the general manager of our business unit uh, he actually couldn't be here tonight but he was on site last week uh, to participate in some of these meetings and really just you know let everyone know that you know the importance for us to to follow through and and deliver this project when it's all said and done any questions 
Don't everybody speak at once. Who wants to lead off? Uh, I, I assume that there will be plenty of time for teachers to settle into their new classrooms before the new year begins. Plenty of time as defined by multiple weeks now. Um, I guess I'll, I'll respond. Yeah, I'll, yeah. The expectation is that um, we will be abandoning the old building on the last day of classes. Mm -hmm. That's what we're gearing up towards. Um, and ideally, to try to have as many. Um, there are some spaces that we can start moving right. sooner than that. Not many, but some. And then we will. Uh, we we're making some decisions about how we'll move, um, with the idea of sort of knowing when these build these sections will be available right. instead of say doing the the crate process where they pack up crates roll them in unpack instead we'll do boxes that we can let sit through the summer and we also know that some of the pack um, some of the um, furniture and even the new furniture will have to go into the gym with that we're going to use as a staging area mm -hmm. uh, so our hope is that the school will be um, opened on the um, the week, the last week in August, and that's when uh, now equipment and um, furniture, et cetera, will have been moved into the appropriate classes and offices. But that at that point we'll be able to um, stage to have teachers come in and and work on uh, setting up their spaces. So it's the parking lot is the factor. So the building itself could be 100% complete, but we won't have we won't be able to receive people because we'll only have a construction parking lot. So that isn't that the building won't be done. It's that the parking lot will also be tore up. Can you talk about that a little more? The parking lot. We haven't actually heard what the plan is for the parking lot here. Yes. So uh, right. Uh, so that was um, actually starting. Um, a lead up to the parking lot, but starting on Monday, uh, we were actually hoping to. Um, to start site work a little bit um, uh, middle of March. Uh, we, uh, winter, unfortunately, didn't, didn't allow for that. But uh, Monday, our site work contractor is going to be remobilizing on site to start a lot of the hardscape work right adjacent to the building. And then uh, some a little bit of the area back here. And then they are also uh, gearing up to mobilize. So come as soon as the, the kids let out for the summer. Um, they're going to be uh, uh, redo redoing the parking lot as well over that seven week period before the kids return. Would there be places for teachers to park if they wanted to come in and work? No. 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 Okay. I think we're, we're looking to see if there's a way we can make an arrangement. Um, we can schedule some hours where we do some carpooling That's and do some wondering. off site parking and, you know, uh, no. that there's a. It, well, no, I mean, when, when the teachers. TCO comes okay, in, I guess yes. that's it. Once the TCO is established, even if the parking lot isn't ready, um, that's what we were talking about, if potentially, but right now we're really focused on that last week of August. But there may be some opportunities for, you know, arrangements, but we have to make sure the TCO is in place. There's, mm -hmm. right, right. We so won't, no one will be going until right, that's right. established. If you could, so uh, the, the, just to be clear with the audience, is substantially complete here is the date construction stops. Perhaps it doesn't necessarily mean humans can occupy the space. Right, right. Uh, it's upon the issuance of the TCO, right, Temporary right. Certificate of Occupancy, mm -hmm. that people and combustibles, or what, what is the... No, so, uh, so we had some preliminary discussions with the, um, uh, with the building department. Uh, so the, uh, uh, as far as being able to move combustibles into the building, so boxes of books or supplies, whatever they intend to put in the classrooms, uh, that's contingent on having life safety systems set up. So life safety is uh, sprinkler systems and fire alarm. And so that's actually um, on track for the building as a whole to be up and running, you know, uh, end of May, a little bit into June. So that fits into uh, uh, to when uh, the district is going to start moving stuff into the new building. The, uh, the, the driver for, uh, for occupancy is really you know it, it, it's it's the last area to be done and FF and E is, is a driver too, so they uh, we can do preliminary inspections leading up to this, and uh, we've had some discussions with the town in that regard too as areas start to to free up um, and just to make efficient use of everyone's time instead of saying hey look the whole building's ready come on in and walk through eighty thousand square feet here's uh you know you know we'll kind of chunk it out a little bit at a time. 
um, but then they'll do their final once all the uh, owner FF&E is in place. And right now that's scheduled for uh, to start showing up in July, correct, Mary? Exactly. So, you know, we're, we're looking to position ourselves come, you know, this, this first week in August is when we really want to start, um, you know, looking to pin down that, that certificate. So, so just to reiterate what, what Hugh said, I think in a different way, the construction will be complete hopefully on that last, well, not the auditorium, but on the last component within Area C, um, August 2nd per the schedule. But then yes. after August 2nd comes the activities to remain. So the punch list, air monitoring, testing, mechanical uh, systems testing. Specific to this area, but a lot of this is going to be happening for these other areas. So as soon as, you know, as soon as the, uh, um, you know, area B is done, we're going to start punch list. We're going to start final cleaning. We're going to start monitoring. We're, so we're not waiting, you know, for the whole building to be done. We're going to start uh, following through with those activities as the buildings turn over. So that's a good point, Joe. So that's why we're, we're potentially looking at that last week of August for a TCO to, to be ready for staff to come in and make their new homes their homes and get that's ready right. for students. That's Be right, because that will apply to the building as a whole. And we'll not, you know, we, we're not asking for a, uh, a certificate of occupancy by area. When is the first day of school? Oh, that's not established <coughs> yet. Uh -huh. I mean, with regionalization, that needs to be firmed up. Mike, the um, area B, because it's going to be ready in April, and I know that we can do some moving in but not put combustibles there, but as far as getting uh, some of the ff &E can go in at that point, correct? That's correct. Right? That's correct. So there we can take advantage. I mean, there. It's limited space and it's mostly office space, but there we can take advantage of at least getting like, nurses supplies in and um, some of the uh, um, equipment that's appropriate for life skills classes. So it's not really setting up classrooms per se, but it's, um, it's being able to take inventory and make sure things are moved in. So, And I think it's important to know, well, we, we certainly want teachers to have an opportunity to create the space for learning that is important to um, the process. It's a different. They they know they're they they know what they're expecting. They in fact we have been having some tours now that the model classroom is getting close to being completed. Um, I think this the teachers are um, downsizing substantially, and some of the sort of um, personal effects that are that pile up after years of being in the same room. They're recognizing that's not something that they'll be bringing with them. So the um, amount of time that will be required to, to prepare um, won't be as substantial. For some teachers it will, and certainly more in the middle school than in the um, high school. And say with something like science where they need to, um, there's quite a lot of equipment and supplies that will need to be um, evaluated. But they've been, they're ready to do that too. They're going through that purging process and trying to figure out what actually they need to bring over. So when I've been into new schools, and I'm sure that those in Trip and our designers and Mike could say the same thing, but um, sometimes in that first year, it's not as it's not as you know decorated, or it's not as um, you know it doesn't have the character that it will in the second year. We have a lot of stained glass to install. We have a, a you know quite a collection of art that we need to curate, um, and that's not going to go up in September. Right, right. And it wouldn't and be wise to anyone. No, exactly, and I think we're very conscious of that. We have people who will help us do some of that work, and we know that if it's going to be right, it'll take some time. And I think that's the, I'd like to think that the faculty is recognizing that as well. <coughs> I just want to make sure that we do leave enough time for the teachers to move, especially if some might have plans to travel you know, last week of August. Yeah, will there be potentially a two-week window, or is it just going to be a generally week? they don't travel? I, I, I think I think we need I think we need to really talk okay. about the fact that we're doing major site work, which will restrict access right. to the site for a good portion of August, and there may be no chance to get people in earlier to do these types of things, even with a kind of a uh, carpooling plan or these are things in discussion right now. I would assume that there will be no access okay. before the end of the last week or two of August for people to get in here. So just for expectation's sake, right. there's right. also no access to the athletic fields Correct. for preseason activities. Right. 
So that's kind right. of so, and we've already been working on that, working on a schedule to be off site, trying to figure out when students you know, the distribution of equipment, how that can be managed. So n now that we're getting closer to having a full schedule, then then Lindsay and I will work on that in collaboration with um, cust the custodians and uh, Jesse. Question. I want to just ask about the demolition in the back there. Um, you've talked about how th other things are dependent upon that demolition. Can you give us a sense of that? It, what's is that dependent upon other things being done first here? Or are you going to start that simultaneous to working on some of this other work? Or? Yeah, so the driver for demolition is getting the kids out of the building. Right, okay. And, and getting uh, the whatever needs to move from the uh, either out or into the new building from the old building. Mm -hmm. And so we've already had some coordination uh, meetings with the district. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, uh, first week in July is uh, we're, we're looking to start abatement which is going to follow right behind with uh, with demolition and just because of the um <clears throat> you know the uh, amount of work that's involved you know this is a a kind of a, a critical area right here mm -hmm. uh where we have to surgically remove the the uh the existing building from uh from uh the back of the auditorium you know there's some egress out, right. out the back here that we have to clear in time mm -hmm. for um uh, for when the kids come back uh, so we're uh, so you know there's a tall order uh, we're actually uh, we, we already have plans to get in and uh, over spring break to take advantage of what we can just to get a jump on it mm -hmm. and just um, I'll be that that further ahead once uh, uh, for when they come back in July okay. so that hallway that is adjacent to the auditorium and to the to the orange spaces the, the locker yes. rooms the changing rooms yes um, that's going to be an active a temporary active construction site during spring break right and that, that's that's part of the idea is that yes yeah, so this get in uh, there. what's referred to as the cold corridor that currently connects the gym back to the school uh, so that corridor and then this uh, as much of this area that's going to be part of this area, you know, part of the building that we have to peel back from the existing. That's what we're looking to take advantage of over spring break. Pretty much from the, that whole corridor up to the district office. And you're talking about the beam? Yes, it, it's really just, it's just floor tile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Low hanging fruit that we're just able to take advantage of. And sure. Chris. Chris. Um, I guess I'd What's the level of confidence from Turner and Dorn Whittier that we're going to be able to complete all of this and turn it over <coughs> to the teachers and the students by the last week in August, or you know, so they have some modest amount of time to get ready? Um, what you know, what what's your degree of confidence there from both firms? And after you answer that, what do we do if we're late? I mean, because if we can't turn it over, we have to delay the opening of school. I guess that's. I don't know how we're going to handle that, and I don't know that it's time to start thinking about it, but at some point, you know, if there's a risk of being late again. Yeah. Um, so what, what's the Well, speaking level? for, on behalf of Turner, our, our, uh, we have a high level, high level of confidence. Um, you know, the, the fact that we're, we're finishing a lot of these areas months before they, they really, we have to uh, uh, have that certificate in hand, obviously it helps with that, you know, and, um, even though, you know, you, you could you could suggest we might be pushing the envelope over here, but the reality is a lot of these classrooms, and the one thing I forgot to mention is, you know, we all walked the building too, so we're able to see, you know, firsthand where we're at, and, you know, having, you know, uh, individuals present that have, you know, 20, 30 years of construction experience, you know, they, they have a good idea of how much time's left. No, so I, that, I, hope, that I walked through helps. it last week, and, you know, I d I'm not that professional, but, it looked like, um, you know, hoping for April was a pipe dream, and it looks like to me September is we've got our work to do. But you know, again, I don't, I don't know what to look for. But I'm glad you have a high degree of confidence. Yeah, yeah. Trip, you want to? Yeah, I would just reiterate the same. I, I think you have to look at <clears throat> what are the major elements of a building when you're trying to progress a schedule forward. We're right now looking, for the most part, um, at drywall being. I want to say about 85 to 90 percent complete. After you're after you've closed in your walls, you're ready to start putting the floor in your spiel. I'm sorry. I, I, I normally I'll just introduce you, Trip Elmore from Doran Whittier. Thank you. Yeah, just to sorry. Um, 
So, so uh, when we're walking the site and looking at area by area, floor by floor, uh, obviously the th three-story structure um, is being repetitive going from the top down. I, I would say that we are very confident about the dates that Turner is putting forth. And then the next step that you have to follow is look at it week to week and say, are we making the dates that we thought we would make or are we getting some win, some lose? And, and do they build confidence that uh, you think that the end date is really going to still hold? So if the uh, end date's off by a week, um, it, I don't know that it really affects us other than the one area where we're calling it 8-3 uh, or 8-2, excuse me. Um, however, the other areas I'm very confident that are going to be completed um, as long as we hold the schedule as we're going week to week. So the answer to your question is what do you do? You don't do it in j July, some sort of immediate action. You do it week to week because we do not have an option but to go in here in September. So if we start to see the wheels come off the trolley, you fix it. And it has to be a weekly event where you're paying attention. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you both. And um, I, I, I don't know if this is real wood or not, but I'm going to knock it on anyway. Uh, we, you know, we've had, uh, we've brought in ownership for, from oh, some of our subcontracting partners over the past you know, months <coughs> to really get their buy into the schedule. We've had a, uh, this past couple weeks, we've had a, a, a tremendous amount of momentum that we're just, you know, we're going to try to continue to ride through the next uh, couple months. So we're really getting buy-in from, uh, from the trades. And uh, so that's obviously, you know, that helps with the confidence. So whereas we had an admittedly aggressive timeline from the outset, this, this timeline we're feeling like it's, it's not aggressive, it's instead practical. Practical. Yes. <laughs> And, and when you talked about the, the TCO being for the whole building as opposed to for individual components, um, that whole building, though, doesn't include the area D auditorium. So somehow that's going to be... Right. So we're going to, if, we, if we're not able to deliver that come <coughs> September, we're going to have to uh, you know, temporarily section that off from the rest of the building. You have a plan in place for this? Yeah, yeah. It's really just uh, locking the doors. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll just make sure right, sure. And then it, I'm just trying to touch all of our bases for things that we know have, have been schedule impacts in the past. Certainly aggressive timeline is, is one. Um, the availability of skilled trades due to market conditions, competing with, with other job sites and things like that. Um, how are we feeling about, about that? I mean, th this I is just I, checking I, off boxes. I think, I think, I think, we've I think all just touched about, on it, you know, and uh, we know that, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of competition in this area and we're trying to get ahead of it. And I think we're doing a, a good job at that. You know, we're, um, uh, there's another high school somewhere close by that's in probably a similar predicament, you know? And so we're, and a lot of the same trades on this project are working over there too. So we're, uh, you know, trying to, I guess, squeak the loudest. So they, they come and, you know, they, um, you know, we're able to, um, uh, you know, work through this schedule. And we've gotten a lot of that buy-in. It's exactly what I just spoke to with the, uh, some of these trades um, following it through. It's been um, so far, it's been positive. Yeah. Yeah. At the last the school buildings committee meeting, uh, we pushed through a little bit on this. Uh, specifically, the chair of the committee asked you personally, how confident were you to meet the September date? And you said, very. When the Christus asked you, you said, I have a high level. Is high level lower or higher <laughs> than Barry? I, I, I hesitated, but I almost was going to ask you to answer that question for me. <laughs> so I guess it's the same. You know, I just, it, it just worded it different. Okay, second question I have for you uh, to make me feel better. What's turn this record on completing schools when they're supposed to be completed? We have never not delivered. And I think Carl Stewart made that clear when he was here last week, too. So this isn't going to be the first. This is not going to be the first. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> you have a high level of very confident. Steve? So I've been um, having a lot of fun looking through all the recovery schedule updates. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at early start, early finish, actual start, actual finish. 
Um, I may have misread it, but I did not see any time where the actual finish did not equal the early finish. Is that correct? Is there anything that took longer than expected so far? Well, the, the schedule is fluid. Schedule is fluid. Right. And so we, uh, you know, we start with the baseline and, you know, you win some, you lose some, and, you know, then and we, we track accordingly. Um, and, uh, you know, if we, if uh, where things may, uh, if, we're, if we're being delayed in certain areas, that's just, you know, we just direct focus, come up with a plan on how to recover that time. And that's, it's almost a daily discussion at this point. Certainly weekly. Our superintendent updates that weekly to, you know, so we have a, um, a good understanding of where we're at. Okay, because I do see the differences between baseline to finish and early finish. Question about just about weather, the impact of weather, the potential impact of weather. There's the obvious one if we have more school days out and the kids are in school longer. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Any other ways in which weather well, that could have an impact or adverse weather could have an impact on no, the we're, the we're, you know, mostly in interiors right now. So everyone's working inside. Right. So even okay. the, you know, the rainy weather that's coming up, you know, that's not relevant. No. Okay. Good to know. Right. Oh, sure. I mean, it could have an effect on landscaping. It could, right. yeah. Um, right, but you still potentially could get in. But you have some landscaping. It you it take takes care of. it takes a a, lot. A, a pretty big storm to you know our our site contractor will work through you know, you know they'll work through rain for the most part unless it's really nasty you know sure. dangerous you know. Sure. They the typically bigger plan on work. Might be the darn snowstorms that keep kids out yeah. of school. Right. We're hoping the snow is behind us. Let's hope. Yeah. Anyway. At least it's bold. Yeah. So I'll offer one thing on this. I actually like the new phasing schedule. I think if, if I could write anything into the meeting minutes for the next school building committee 50 years from now, it's that phased projects suck. Like, let's not do that again. <laughs> so uh, this working this way and trying to keep the, the end date right and let the crews work efficiently through the space essentially connecting the both ends in the middle and walking out the front door when they're done. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense to me. What I would like to know is when, and I think we have a trigger point in there, and it's probably something that the school committee should either know the date of or mm -hmm. be the trigger for. At some point, I think in about May or Ju maybe early June, you guys are going to have to make a decision on pulling down the back building, right? And if if you haven't hit, a, you ought to have a threshold for the, the, you know, a timeline. If you haven't hit dates to that point, you guys have a decision to make about don't touch that building. We need to work around and, and finish out. And it, it's, it's a, it's, I don't want to call it a meltdown scenario, but it is the correct scenario for you guys to keep in your back pocket that you have a school to open on the first of the school year, regardless of this construction schedule. We need you to hit the schedule, but we can't have no school. So I would suggest to you guys that you ha help have Turner, or you might already know the date, but identify that date, make sure that you're consulted on it, and make sure that, that you know when you're pulling the lever that eliminates the net so he was referencing is um, typically when you miss a mark you have the opportunity to bus kids to an abandoned building within your district or within your surrounding towns we live in very rural Massachusetts and the only abandoned building in the area is AMMS but they're um, Adams Memorial but their boiler system has been decommissioned so it's not an acceptable building to um, for use so our other option would be bringing in trailers um, but if we needed that level of trailers we would need to know now essentially to get them delivered so that's right yes so the point being on that discussion we don't i actually believe in this schedule i have more confidence in this schedule than i did in and especially after last week's meeting uh with the, the turner crew mm -hmm. uh i think we've got a real shot at this and it makes more sense it feels like the crews are going to be focused it feels like it's got more flow to it than the sort of uh, somewhat hopscotch approach uh, that we were working under originally. So I think this is a good thing. I just want you guys to know where your trigger point is because that's our... I'd like to add to that because, you know, if, if the demolition does not occur, the auditorium can't be used because of a lack of egress. 
Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's a biggie. Yeah. 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 So it's not just like a, a, an easy way out out of a, a, a delay mm -hmm. at all, I think. You know? um, so. There's a question. I'm just going to ask, is it true that the not doing the demo would help, or is it two different crews? Like, all right, Hugh, I guess what you're saying is if it looks like we're running late on the phasing that we've got here, that we should hold off on the demo. But is that actually a reasonable point? Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, it's a separate, right, yeah. It's Because um, we still have yes. occupancy yeah, in this building. Yeah. So essentially not to divert resources mm -hmm. to the demo. So yeah, it's no, the same completely crew? separate contractor, yeah, they're... I, that's what I'm asking. Like, if it's a separate contractor, it it's is. not you guys. What is it? No. no. So what he was referring to is if you know mm -hmm. um, if something happens, and you know we we you know, a month or two from now we're like, okay, well you know it doesn't look like the dates are shaking out the way we uh, we thought. Um, maybe September isn't realistic. You know we should probably oh, hold I off see. on gotcha. taking the, the school that's down. That's what I didn't get. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a little by the way, slow on the uptake. <laughs> there is a two-pronged solution, that you can get. <coughs> which is one, don't demo. Two, uh, demo and say October first is the date. I don't know that that works for you guys in terms of operationally with the the state and all that stuff and teachers and students. That is they. Than parents, yeah, like, yeah. like there's a whole bunch start, of things that start school on October first. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, you could, that, that's the, the 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 alternative. There are two release valves. Mm -hmm. One is moving the start date. Uh, two is opening in the old school. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe what we have learned from our projects so far is the recovery is not an assumption of more manpower bringing it in on time. We've struggled with that each time. Each time we say if we had. 20% more people this would be done it's very difficult don't don't rely on that as the solution to this problem okay. just kind of the confidence question if we had, had this schedule to begin with and hadn't gone with the April date would you have the same concerns about meeting the no concerns at all right would other people around the table have concerns if we had just started with this and not said we were going to do April because we really wanted an aggressive schedule, but if we had put this on the table to begin with and we were where we are now, would we be having an issue with the getting the kids in on time? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, I'm, a, I'm an Eeyore, so I'm always, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I politely say I suffer from an optimism deficit. So I'm always working the downside of something. So this, the idea that, that, that we have about a month before the schools open and, and our, the last construction guy optimistically walks out the door just about a month in advance, that feels tight. It can't be two months in front. You know, there, mm -hmm. it's going to be some range in front, but I'm always worried about the downside of these things. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the push that was done earlier was done in part because um, there was a, a, an effort to try to move as quickly as possible because you don't know what you're going to get hit with. I don't think I don't think that it's hurt terribly to have tried. Um, if weather was better, if conditions were better, we would be moving faster. Um, we had a rough sense that there was going to be an, a challenge with labor. Um, this is a hot construction market. It's not just the high school down the road. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. other folks having trouble in this area. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's what happens. And you couldn't have predicted that. This aggressive, the aggressive schedule approach that was taken early on has saved us money at earlier points. It's challenging to us now, uh, and that's why the aggressive work has to continue. But I, I can't. I don't think you can say because it's a counterfactual. Would we have been better? We might have gotten a bit a little softer about. Yeah, we've got a margin if we weren't pushing as hard. As and we I, I want to reiterate. I am. I am actually very confident in the schedule. I believe that this, that the team is going to pull this off. I think that the, the having walked the site, having listened to the crew, it seems uh, doable. Uh, all I want for the district, because I got kids that are going to show up, they got to get out of the house September 1st, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> that uh, I just want to make sure you've covered that uh, other yeah. side. And we have to be careful about September 1st. Okay, yeah. Okay, we right. don't, we don't yeah. have well, a date. Okay, exactly. okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, like, what do we need to do to determine whether we're in agreement that we're going to make this 
schedule. I mean, do we have to approve something tonight? And if so, what would we be approving? So that's a question. Uh, it is a question. There, there was a phase completion schedule that was a part of the original construction manager contract, correct? Correct. Uh, and, and there's a question as to you know, our end date on that, um, when we're done, 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 has not changed. But the steps in between here and there have changed. Um, and so that's a point certainly where we need to, whether it's amending a contract or having a mutual agreement somehow, that's a point that we need to get to where we can say, all right, so this is, this is just, you know, things about this are fluid, but there are other things that are not. Like for instance, hitting the dates for being able to get into the building and knowing way ahead of time if, if that's at risk. Um, and so I think that is a question. It's, it's to some extent a legal and contractual type question. Um, as well as a practical one of how do we, how do we, you know, how does the school committee, how does the school building committee, how does Turner, how does Dora Whittier, how does everybody have some, something, how does Perkins Eastman have something to look at and to say, we agreed to this and, and we're going to do it. Um, but it is, it's actually a question as opposed to, uh, I don't, I don't have an immediate answer aside from the natural thing to me is to amend a contract with a f new phase completion schedule that's detailed. Um, but I know that there might be questions about that from others in the room, so I don't want to well, I don't want to speak. What did we do with the earlier schedule? Did we have that in it? Does we have the earlier schedule in a contract? The earlier schedule is in the uh, GMP. In the John, okay. Mm -hmm. In the guaranteed maximum price okay. amendment to the original contract. All right. And we would do an amendment, a further you amendment. You basically do a change order request or a change to the contract amendment. Okay. Bringing this schedule in. Sure. Um, but to Joe's point, the end date hasn't changed. So it's right. a matter of changing the middle. middle right. are, we, mm -hmm. are we changing the details sure. Or, um, sure. relative to changing? We're not mm -hmm. changing the end date, right? Mm -hmm. So Mike, t yeah. t Turner's perspective, Mike, because it, this is a this is a two or three or four party type type schedule and, and agreement. How, how does Turner? What's what's your perspective on that? Just as far as what we need to do to make sure that we're all on the same page and. I mean, the important thing for us is, you know, is is, is getting the, the school turned over. Right. You know, we, had, we, we touched on this a little bit last week, you know, from a practical sense, um, you know, uh, we're not, um, it doesn't, doesn't matter to us. I guess whatever the district decides, you know, we're, we'll, uh, we'll work with them. Right. Okay. Um, the one caution I would make is um, I don't think you should take a lot of time spending a lot of meetings figuring out what the language is going to say um, to make it a legal document. My sense is that we've got the end date. Um, to the extent that we have public record of all this mm -hmm. and to the extent that it's possible to generate something that says this is what it is people, this is what we all understand, um, I would rather see your time spent chasing down what you need to chase down to get the job done. Um, we need to go full throttle on this. And uh, so I'm just a little bit leery of anything that involves extended extra meeting time of all the principal players here because they should be spending their time chasing down and <laughs> harassing, if they have to, the subcontractors to make sure that the work gets done. So priority is the finish line. I agree with that. I do. Um, I think um, it would be nice to have a document but we have a document that has an end date and we have i th agree this is a public record right here that everyone is you know on the line you guys are on the line you know what we need you know you need to deliver the building it would be disastrous for you <laughs> if you didn't yes. deliver the building we all know that yeah so if we're not required to have a contract amendment in order to agree on a new phasing schedule then I, I agree with Paula, our, our time and resources are spent better you know, moving ahead. Stop for my two cents. I, Hugh. I don't think this is a Sorry. question you need to guess at. Uh, there's, uh, you need to touch base with council, find out what the correct process is, and just do what they say. Uh, this is a $64 million contract, or, so it's worth talking to a lawyer and making sure that we've done it the right way such that District's protected, the vendors are protected, everybody know everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. I understand the time constraints, but right. it, it is absolutely worth making that call. Okay. 
it can be both right and simple at the same time. That's yeah, what I'm if we if we do it the right way. Okay. Uh, I, I know that there is room in the budget for that kind of council. If we do have uh, legal mm -hmm. fees in the uh, construction. So, so I think it makes sense just to Kay. do that check mm -hmm. to Absolutely. see. I mean, just it's it's a minimal number of hours to know what we're know what we're supposed to be doing here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do we need a vote on that, or do we need? Just a quick question: Is the yeah. MSBA party to that, or are they? I was just going to say, Trip. Did you check really with the MSBA? They don't really stake in this. They usually trip? do. They would accept. That's why I'm asking. So, uh, Thomas, I did talk to uh, the project manager uh, at the MSBA and asked whether or not that they wanted to weigh in. They, um, as is very typical on all issues of legal, defer to the region. If there's any question about the legal aspects of a project, it always goes back to the district. Uh, MSBA will not issue a legal opinion. He, he also reiterated that he didn't think that this was something that they would comment on. Which means they don't require it. Good. Okay. Yeah. We can, uh, sure. we have money in the budget and the project to get the legal opinion. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. reach out to our construction attorney and at least understand uh, whether or not um, it would be it would behoove us to do it or if we can keep moving yeah. under the same contract with the public document and the, uh, related to the new schedule or a, the new phasing, I should say. Yeah. And what is the simplest mm -hmm. way to proceed if there's an expectation we need to proceed? What's the simplest way to do so? so yeah. We can do that. Let okay. your committee know because your committee holds the contract. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we'll 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 end up bringing that back to our to our committee as far as how to handle it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Quick question, Joe. Um, Chris. Has the building committee went back to um, the MSBA about regionalization? I know there were points in the MSBA for regionalization. We obviously regionalized after we started our building project. Have we talked to them about whether we can get some points? Um, I know that I was extremely disappointed because in the regulations there is a uh, a matching provision. I think it was up to six hundred thousand dollars for creating <coughs> a me. third party account for maintenance of the school. We, you know, relied on that. We went to Williams College. We we got that gift, which we are going to uh, set aside for maintenance. I actually personally talked to the MSBA, and they sent me a letter saying, "Well, we don't really honor that." that provision in the regulation, you know, so what are you going to do other than, uh, uh, you know, challenge them on that. But the, as I recall, the one on regionalization had less um, may do this and had more like if you do it, we will award. And I remember feeling like, geez, it's kind of risky if we regionalize after the building project because we're leaving a certain amount of money on the table. So that's a long-winded question. Um, have we went back to them? What did they say? We, we have not gone back to them regarding that. Um, my first inclination, and you've dealt with, Trip, you've dealt with the MSBA more than I, is they've already set their maximum reimbursement rate, and it won't change. Yeah. Boy, they really, really uh, <laughs> encourage regionalization these days. I mean, they, they, they do. do. At least it's worth it's prior the conversation. To the prior but I to think the what they give points for is expanding a region, right? yeah. and we were not expanding, expanding a region. the pupils. We were so we did ask that question yeah, well, in the beginning. Yeah. We said, well, what happens if we regionalize? And the response was, well, you wouldn't really be a candidate anyway because you're not you're increasing the number of students who are in your <coughs> district. Right. So, yeah, it's a little bit. You know, we could have went the other way and, de and separated, in which yes. case we would have been totally unregionalized <laughs> and going backward on them. But but uh, the same number unless of the two students. towns still send people to the building. Yeah. Because right. if the two towns are still sending kids to the middle high school, then the population hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Just the coordination between the buildings has changed. Correct. So there could be maybe some shared services right. in the building now that it's a region. From the structure of the MSBA system is set up in such a way. I mean, they're, they're pretty hard and fast about a lot of things. Um, and it, part of it is their fiduciary responsibility, the way they manage their money, the way they allocate their money. So it, at least in part, explains why 
they cut the deal with you, and that's that. Mm -hmm. And this idea of money increasing, or even you know, they'll always take less, they'll give you less. Give you less yeah. But but the <laughs> idea of getting more money out of them, right. it's hugely problematic from their standpoint. And and it's kind of understandable if you look carefully at the way they do their finances. But it also sets up. It's why Trip has said to us, don't expect more than X percent, 95, 98 percent, and then you have to be very careful. It's one reason why this project, why they're set up in such a way, to follow very carefully dotting I's and crossing T's with MSBA rules in order to make sure that we get the maximum amount. And you do have to do that. It's set up that way. So to close up this discussion, would it make sense for the building committee to move a recommendation to the transition committee to um, approve the new phasing schedule and to consult with council to see if we need a contract amendment? So we're saying yes, new phasing schedule, yes to the end date. Mm -hmm. If you can do it without a contract amendment, great. If council recommends a contract amendment, we can vote a contract amendment. We'd have to vote it anyway as a transition committee. Mm -hmm. So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Yeah. Second. Oh, this uh, is a, what, one public. There's a query, query too, but I second that motion. Checking the microphone. Uh, happy with me sitting here. Yes. Yeah, Chris. Okay, come on and just let let us know who you who you are and your relationship. Sure. Yeah. Um, my name's Chris. I have a daughter who will be a seventh grader here next year. Um, I'm probably connected in some other ways, but uh, I'll just move forward with my comment. Um, so, my company builds schools for for a living. We've probably during my time built somewhere between 75 and 100 public schools in Massachusetts. We've done dozens of projects with Dora and Whittier and uh, the Perkins companies, um, a, a couple with Turner, but Turner is not a huge player in the public school market. They do a lot of other public works, but um, our, our history with Turner is more limited than the, than the other players that you have here. And my career started with me with my work boots on in schools like this um, and gradually moved into estimating and project management. And so I've literally worked in um, hundreds of buildings like this and again like 75 to 100 or so and specifically in public schools and uh, honestly I would give you guys a, a coin flip at best um, uh, at finishing this on time you're admittedly already razor thin in your schedule so if there's anything that goes wrong a broken piece of equipment an air quality test that needs to be done a second time uh, a sprinkler system that doesn't have the right pressure like I could give you dozens of things that that uh, have happened to us and on schools that we've worked in that are just out of everybody's control there are schools where everybody does everything right but it just doesn't work out the way you want especially when your schedule only gives you one shot at the end to get all of the parts right um, I can't tell you the number of times I've read the several hundred page uh, documents at the beginning of contracts uh, you have a master contract there are sub contracts for all these there are general conditions which outline your rights and remedies for all of these things that happen and I can tell you empirically that if there are there are some things where if you skip them now you will lose your rights and remedies at the end uh, so I'm glad to hear that you'll be contacting your attorney to learn about what rights and remedies you might be giving up uh, if you don't do a contract amendment and lastly I would encourage you all to start talking and have the conversation now uh, with your CM and architect and OPM about who will pay for things like temporary classrooms or accelerated work schedules or other things if they go wrong because it's I think it's very easy um, and I, I honestly mean this with all due respect to the people that are that are here I, I'm, I'm not pointing any fingers I have no idea why um, you know what has led you guys to this point where it's going to be four or five months late um, but if it can be four months late it can be five months late right it's uh, it's not that hard to imagine moving into September October if something goes wrong um, but to have the conversation now and to educate yourselves now as to who's going to pay for all these temporary facilities should that happen and I have found on projects that we are on that when the CM starts sending out uh, notices to subs which is required by contract that if you're late there will be liquidated damages owners of those companies typically gravitate towards projects where the owner is saying we plan on charging you the uh, 
general conditions, $800 a day, $1,200 a day. We're working on a project right now that's $40,000 a day in liquidated damages. And if the owner didn't tell us about it now, when we got to the end of the job and if we said, well, sorry, we're going to be late, they would have lost the ability to charge that. Um, Having those conversations now, I think, will serve two purposes. One, it will let you know the gravity of your decision in May and June when you have to decide if you're going to tear down the old school or come up with some sort of secondary thing. Um, and it's also going to sort of light the fire under your team uh, to make sure that your subs are there on time. Um, a lot of these things will go away very quietly unless you get on top of it now. Um, I won't say any more unless you have any questions points. about that. Sure. Yeah. Yep. We're yep. not four or five months late on the project. It's the um, area A that was in April. Everything else is pretty much on schedule. Is that right, Mike? So it's not the whole project. It's area A that had intended to be uh, for April. Um, there was another what? What? Yeah, now, now the the original intent was the was for the uh, the school to get turned over for occupancy in April. In April. Yeah. So that was one of the area A or the whole school. Not the auditorium. The auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. Sorry. The auditorium. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, we just made you know an adjustment to the to the phasing, so the overall completion is still the same. Mm -hmm. Chris, do, do you have anything else? To, okay. Oh, are, are there Thank any questions you. about any any of those no. items? Maybe for for us, I think the question, Hugh, you had mentioned we need to figure out when that drop dead date is for yes. deciding. Um, so we're going to take that step and try to figure out how to how to handle that and whether and what it is as an option. Mm -hmm. You know, what what does it really mean to preserve the old school just in case we need it? Um, come September mm -hmm. so that's that's one we're, we're gonna see what we should be doing as far as um, making sure we're we're papered appropriately you know not not overly defensively but defensively enough that we know what we're doing mm -hmm. um, and then I think that the other thing that we need to be mindful of whether it's every two weeks or every month preferably every two weeks it's um, how are we tracking you know it's it's are we are we bumping into things that are making us move beyond um, what we're what we're hoping here so uh, whatever steps we need to do to, to do that I think that's to some extent that's all we can do um, unless people have other have other ideas I think that's the well part of what concerned me over uh, the public comment was the possibility that we waive rights through certain actions or inactions and through not doing something at a certain time and I have no idea what those rights are, what the time frames are, but I, you know, I guess um, the building committee comfortable with those issues and have the legal guidance it needs, or you know, I think that I think that's the purpose, Chris, of uh, reaching out to the legal counsel based on this new schedule. If we if this should be accepted as is, if you will, or under the guise of it needs to be recommended to the transition committee to accept it as a contract amendment. With the new phasing schedule. Yeah, I guess I was thinking it was broader than that, or not just should we have a new contract, but you know, what are our what do, what do we lose if we don't? What do we gain if we do? And what are our rights anyway? Even if we have a new contract, when do we have to act on them? But okay, we have liquidated damages just, uh, in, the we, in our present contract. That would be yeah, we right. have. So, it's a copy of the GMP that I believe you need. I don't know if you, the transition committee has it, so we can get you a copy of the GMP. Yeah. Yeah. The objective of this meeting is to uh, develop a manic depressive uh, situation. <laughs> we have succeeded, because uh, I don't know where I am right now. Uh, when we talked about this at the uh, uh, school building uh, committee meeting, and we talked about the fact of the possibility of having uh, trailers on the football field that actually came up and uh, when someone mentioned well whose nickel was that to put the trailers on the field the response back was well it's covered in the contract and uh, with penalties etc and that satisfied me 
is that still the case if in September 1st there's trailers on a football field who's paying for those trailers that are on a football field now Chris thank you very much I don't know uh, <coughs> that didn't make me feel better that he's saying well, you better have a lawyer look at this and on our last meeting we said well it's covered in the present contract well we better have someone look at this because of well, are I, we I, saying that there's a possibility of trailers being on the football field? Are no. we not? I don't, I don't, I don't, not. I don't think we're going to have trailers on the football field. I think we're beyond the bringing in a trailer city. I think to Hugh's point, the trigger point is make a decision. Do you start demo on this present building we're sitting in, or do you open in the present building while the new phase is complete? And that decision has to be made early before we get into pulling the building down. Oh, I'm sorry. How, how long does it take to destroy the old building? Uh, I think the uh, the complete timeline is about three months. Okay. It's a Bateman Ed demo. That means removal of debris and everything. Sorry? That's removal of debris and everything. Yes. It's just not knocking down a building. Yes. Mm -hmm. Same yeah. foundation. Right. Yeah. And you can do that while folks are in the school well the school's well, function well, mm -hmm. the no, once not here. hopefully not in the old building no no i mean, <laughs> I mean yes. no no you know <laughs> what i mean if yes. you moved into the new area yep. is it no, because um, demolition can be noisy and yep, problematic summers ago that's right you right. did um yeah. but so the idea is that you don't um people can be in the new building while you're demolishing the old. you yes. have to be on some kind of special break okay yeah and you know the the, the goal is to you know that that piece we keep talking about is to have that s separation done before they come back, and then everything else is you know, standalone. Yeah, there's still right. going to be activity and whatnot, but right. sure. at least we get the critical piece, mm -hmm. you know, uh, okay. done right away. Right. So the, the the related question that I think we're getting at there is um, to what extent are we prepared to develop a plan for Plan B, which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. if we don't demo the old school building. Um, until we are 100% sure or 99% sure, um, what does that mean, and ha how would it impact how would it impact Turner, how would it impact Everything. us, how would it impact costs? Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 is that an insanely detailed question to ask that would trigger um, anything on your end? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's it's something that would have to be studied a little more to give you an accurate representation of the full impact. The short answer is, you know, you, you delay demo and pushes into later in, uh, into the fall and winter and then you end up maybe doing some landscaping and site work in the spring. That doesn't sound too bad from the outset, but but the devil's in the details there, I'm sure. So yes, yeah, yes. so so trying to figure that out. Right. You have management <laughs> costs, and you know, yeah, but right, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. extend contracts. Beyond but one of the details to. Uh, is, is really it is a detail, but you know, it's a detail which uh, one needs to consider is mm -hmm. is if you have uh, heavy construction traffic, the heavy trucks would carting the demolition debris away over the newly waved access roads and uh, newly paved access roads mm -hmm. and, and parking lot. Right. That is really not the right sequence to do things. Uh, like a different route, though. You do that before you put the top coat on. At, 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 uh, right. No, there are at the latest, you know. There will be costs. It's not that would not be, be a solution to some extent. That would be costs associated. That already has to be part of your plan, to Thomas's point, because we're doing the main parking lot over the summer. Yeah. The in uh, the, uh, road, to the road to Route Seven, or the the e ingress egress uh, access road. I should say. Yeah, has to be done afterwards because, to his point exactly, you're going to be sending a whole bunch of debris over that road, the front entrance road. Yeah, it's all coming. But yeah. it's all going to come behind the building yeah. through the construction area right. and out that way. Right. right. So we would likely just do binder until all that's done, and then do you know top it once at the end. But because yep. there are you know stages to all of this. Mm -hmm. This is before you put the top coat on. You want to get the big trucks out of there. Yep. Sure. Makes perfect sense. So. Um, I've got a motion on the table right now that is seconded, so... Um, That's yours. That is mine. Okay. So unless, I don't know if we want to continue discussion, if anyone else has other questions. So the, the motion is that we right now accept and agree, or at least um, accept the dates under the new phasing plan, 
with the stipulation um, that uh, as a building committee we will reach out to the council for uh, feedback and opinion as to how to best protect ourselves. Actually, the word, yeah, the word is recommend to, uh, recommend to the transition committee, committee that they accept the schedule this, subject right. to I'm sorry, legal yes, review. Thank you. Subject to legal review. Uh, by uh, the building committee will handle the re legal review. And, and to, to put a real to continue discussion for the cherry on top here, regardless. Chris is an experienced builder. We do have to have some confidence in our team mm -hmm. that they're going to achieve the dates they put in front of us. I do think uh, it's reasonable to assume that if they didn't, well, that they believe in these dates, they're telling us they believe in these dates. Uh, the big important thing for us is to manage the downside risk if these dates don't hold. Uh, so I, again, I think it's a strong recommendation to the school building committee to adopt this. Let's believe in our guys, but we've got to get clear on what happens if it starts to go sideways. As far as weekly monitoring, I know uh, Kim's uh, been, or we have a lot of seats at the weekly construction table meeting. Uh, we just need to raise the alarm as quick as possible, and we're expecting you guys to to alert us. Uh, as quickly as possible. I, our OPM specifically should be uh, very in tune with keeping the schedule, keeping us apprised of the schedule. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, do we waive any rights that we have sitting here today by agreeing to the new schedule? Yeah. And that's, that's why we transfer. That's, that's, that's why you're, some, you're having exactly. legal counsel review right. that right. particular right. issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and it's important to note that the transition committee is the one that owns the contract. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't be the school building committee amend, you know, unilaterally amending or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, so our, our motion is to recommend to the transition committee after legal review. Uh, that you gives us the and I would assume you guys are going to take it tonight, not take no further action, and then go out and talk to council, right. and then in a future right. date, right. Uh, yes. yeah, accept or reject. Yeah. That's so no, essentially no changes are being made tonight. Right. You do have some feedback from us. Yeah. That the, uh, I don't understand why we need to uh, approve the new schedule to begin with. We make a recommendation that this needs to be investigated by legal counsel. Why do, what is the purpose of, of accepting the new schedule? I, I don't understand that. That, that, that. that goes to your point, because I don't know what the implications are either. And you are a lawyer, and I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> We're recommending acceptance contingent upon the lawyers. Why do we do that? Because, we, because we're reflecting some confidence in the team that this has enough, this schedule that they're proposing has enough margin for error, taking <coughs> Chris's points into consideration that these folks have taken, uh, have uh, made some assumptions about including margins for error. That it's not, that it's close, but yeah. they're assuming that they're going to have some wiggle room in this. But, you know, having said that, I'll accept a friendly amendment to recommend to the school Just building committee sure. to, uh, can I ask a clarifying question there? Is the school build or is the school transition committee going to tell the school building committee to go talk to the lawyers? Mm -hmm. No, you guys are going to do that. Then it is it is the, then the school build. I'll, can I amend my own motion or withdraw it? Or, no, the redo it. Okay, <laughs> withdraw. My language, your motion, do whatever yeah. you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the school building committee recommends to the transition committee uh, that you seek legal counsel advice on the amendment of the GMP with regards to schedule. Once you've decided on that, once you understand the legal ramifications of that, then we'll decide whether or not we advance the schedule forward. Yeah, that is what I'm mm. okay. thinking. Okay. Did I get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So second again. Moved and seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, seeing no further discussion, all in favor from the school building committee of the recommendation um, or the motion put forth by you. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Oh, I'm abstaining, sorry. Kim's abstaining. So we have one abstention from the school building committee. So the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. I do have another item on the project schedule that I want to bring up <coughs> with all of us present, okay. um, which is with this updated schedule, the transition committee, or I'm mindful of the fact that 
we've got summer planning that we need to be doing with a with a different setup than was originally expected. Um, we have the end of the school year. We have regionalization and our July one turnover handoff date, um, which is not a not a not so complicated set of things um, to use as many double negatives as I can. Um, and so I think trying to come up with ways to make it so that our administration is um, is as freed to do that as we can makes a lot of sense. Um, so I would also urge us to work somehow on ways to um, say, take a look at those weekly and monthly reports coming from the OPM um, as committees or as delegates from the committees and being able to um, look at that and help the administration figure out how things are progressing, what to do and, and, and how to go about it. Um, and I think that's something that maybe we bring back to our committees as far as you know, what steps can we take to help. Um, same thing relates to change orders. Right now I think it's um, the, really the burden of um, knowing the details and being able to review from the owner's perspective is right now it's on um, on the superintendent and on Carrie. Um, I think that's something where to whatever extent we can or should beef that process up, make it so that maybe there are three people and there are two of three that should um, be able to weigh in on it and, and know what's what's happening. That would be, I think, potentially great. Uh, and then the, the last thing is we've got a lot of stuff flying around right now as far as um, responsibilities and people who are, who are double checking, you know, is, is this going to meet our needs? Is that going to meet our needs? Um, and so I, I'd also like to, uh, this is unilateral right now, but I, I hope it's a multi-committee and Turner and Perkins Eastman and Dora Whittier effort to try to figure out how to um, layer on some more ability to have visibility into the into the project and and know you know how are things progressing um, if we do have questions making sure that they are visible to everybody and getting answered as quickly as possible and, and so this isn't like this isn't a set of answers um, but this is kind of just a let's figure out how to um, further improve that effort as a team so that the administration is um, as freed to do the, the jobs that we typically employ them to do, um, which would be getting through that close of the school year, figuring out how to, how to handle what's happening with the summer, um, and getting across the finish line as far as the regionalization effort come July 1. So you know, th this isn't you know, motion ready or anything to that effect, but I do want us to, over the course of the next couple of weeks, try to figure out as teams how to, how to streamline that, and maybe that does end up with some motions and some new structures. Um, over the next two to three weeks, but it's just kind of a, I've been extremely mindful of it and I want to make sure we're all, we're all on top of it, so. Can I Thanks. just um, make a suggestion while Mark is here? I think it would be really helpful to have Mark involved in, I know your time is tight and your availability is limited, but I think if he's involved in the approvals and other things sort of on a more regular basis, the weekly meetings, even if you have to call in. Um, I, well, I, I can do that. I can try to call in. Yeah. Um, I don't the have calling authority. In, I, I don't have any assigning authority for the district, so that's that's one of the issues of the change. Right, but you can I can at least in. weigh in on an opinion. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Which could be valuable. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can try to attend more. If it's my schedule, uh, my job permits. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I All mean, right. I, I do need to say, like, we had a productive meeting with both sets of town managers and town accountants and town treasurers today. So we are forging forward with regionalization. We do have a meeting with the town Thursday, a planning meeting, to talk about, you know, what buildings or places we can utilize to make this happen. So the towns are aware of our constraints on have stepped up and are working with us as partners so I know Jason is here this evening and you know so his departments have been you know helpful in this so yeah okay do you have any other comments no so okay um, so for the SBC uh, we don't have any other business not anticipated 48 hours prior to this meeting uh, the school building committee's next meeting is April 10th 5.30 p.m. That's a Tuesday evening. 
uh, right here at the school library. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I need a motion to adjourn the school building committee meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Hugh. Um, thank you very much. I'll call to uh, close the school building committee meeting for uh, the night of March 27th, 2018. It is now 7.18 p.m. So the school building committee is adjourned. Can you give us a minute to yep. clear up? So and Oh, I'm sorry. We do have to, we do have to vote. Who, all in favor of adjourning. Sorry. Thank you, Stephen. I just, I, I never expect anyone to say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I think that was unanimous, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for, uh, for television purposes, we need a few minutes to be able to close out this video and open up to a new one for the rest of the transition committee's agenda. So we're going to take a very brief break and come right back. But we are still in open session.